Welcome to Bad Food Blog, and look what we've got here. We are going to try my new George Foreman grill. I bought this about three months ago, I think just after Christmas or maybe even before, and I have not even taken it out of the box. So gonna be a bit of an unboxing. I'm gonna to have to wash parts of it before use, and then I'm gonna try it with these, which I purchased from Sainsbury's yesterday. We have, Cajun chicken breast grills. Sorry, I'm reading these in reverse because uh, the camera's screen is reversed. And chili and lime chicken mini fillets. And they both appear, so these are these are larger chicken breasts and these are mini fillets. Mini fillets are just when you cut a fillet into four pieces by the looks of it. And obviously these are just full ones. So we're gonna be having these and we're gonna be putting them in some Paul Hollywood crusty rolls. And some Taste the Difference um, sort of chapata style baguettes, which I believe these are called sourdough for added flavor. Okay. I don't really care if sourdough or not. It's not really one of those things. And, oh, you gotta see this for later. Sorry, I'll be mean, two seconds. I found the world's smallest Frey Bentos. Look at the size of this little thing, look. That's not a giant hand or head. Well, it is a giant head, but that is genuinely a Frey Bentos um, mini turn. So I might cook that for a video later in the week, but that's gonna be a special one. It's gonna be quite a short video. I think it's not gonna be more than five minutes. Certainly not more gonna take me more than a minute to eat. Right, let's get on with the unboxing, shall we? And of course, somebody's calling me. Glad I put the phone on silent for once. We'll be back in a minute. So for the unboxing, I've gone for a slightly higher angle. Um, don't know if this is gonna work or not. Probably, yeah, I think it will. So the question is, will I require a knife to unbox this or will everything come out okay? I need to move the camera even higher so you can see everything that's going on. That's better, All right. Oh, look at this little nice labeling there. The world's number one electric grill brand. Let's go around and read the whole box. Apparently it heats up 160% faster it is two times easier to clean. Star, 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 star. How do you determine something is easier to clean? Let alone two times easier to clean. Seems to be quite a 30% safe space, space saving. It's a tongue twister, nearly. Your only limitation is your imagination. Well, that's true for everything in the world. Oh, more box, more box stuff, right? We're getting there. George Foreman. Versatile suitable for cooking meats, fish, vegetables, even sandwiches and paninis. Cool. 30% space saving with vertical storage. Cool. Perfect drip fit tray. Okay. Folding hinge. That's always important. Uh, adjustable rear food flat. We're going to test all of these, obviously. Switch on to plate in under six minutes. Ready to cook indicator light. Okay, we'll find out where the indicator light is. Here we go. Uh-huh. The good old fashioned big British safety plug. And then when you go to another country and have to deal with really flimsy pieces of metal carrying large current, you really do come back here and appreciate that. To all the people who watch from America, our plugs are like this because they're 240 volt and up to 13 amps which is something which you need um, like a Tesla charger to recreate in your house or a massive great round plug like this. Right, we have a manual. Ooh. Oh, it's just full of recipes. It's got like one page or two pages of like, this is your grill, four pages of this is your grill and then the rest is all recipes. How long to cook in minutes? Now the OptiGrill that this is replacing, the sensor broke in it and that thing was automatically timing how long you cook stuff. But like all things electronic that, control, that, can, that has additional electronics to control it, eventually the sensors all went to kaput because they're attacked by moisture the entire time. Very, very much plastic in this. And due to the simple fact that over four or five, ye uh, five years, it completely broke down. We had a George Foreman grill before that um, but I've gone back to the George Foreman grill because I would prefer a dumb device that worked all the time as opposed to a smart device that never works. Oh, wow. 
I was expecting this top bit to be metal, but I think, I think that's plastic. Some sort of baker like plastic, and that's definitely metal. And that's metal, piece of packing material, paper. So the first thing to note is that the plates do not come off unless you unscrew them. Which is something the optical had, is you could just remove the plates, which makes them very easy to clean. And you can put them in the dishwasher. Whereas this, um, the plates don't come off. So that's a big difference between this and the Optigrill. This feels very, very lightweight. Hmm, we're gonna have to see how it performs. Here is the drip tray. See, we have the yes and no light, no yes light. The drip tray. Oh, it kind of, oh, there we go. There's a little clip thing for it to go in there. There we go. Could end up with George Foreman grilled into some of my food by the looks of it. Right, I believe we're getting almost to the phase of testing it. Um, washing it up's interesting. I can't really douse it in the sink, can I? I guess I'm just gonna get some kitchen towel and just make sure that it doesn't have anything on the surface. It's come from the factory. I am seeing some stuff come off. Obviously the surface is going to be sterilized when I start cooking on it, because it's going to go woo, super hot. There. Yeah. Cable's not exactly majorly long. So I can't use it on this middle island, for example. We're gonna have to go over to what I call the cooking area. So let's move over there. Our cooking area. I just need to move that out of the way. And there's the George Foreman grill. Hmm. Unplug the toaster. Plug in the grill, and I believe that means it's heating. So six minutes to get up to temperature. It's already pretty hot. By the way, you never should ever do what I just did there. That was really bad. Yeah, never. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's it, yeah. Okay, I put the oven on, putting the bread rolls in. I'm not gonna make you sit here and wait for the six minutes. Um, I'm gonna come return when it, this thing is green. Okay, that did not take six minutes to get up to temperature. It took around two or three minutes to get up to temperature. There is smoke coming off of it. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but I'm seeing smoke coming off of it. It might be steam. Certainly could be steam, definitely from where I used the paper towels on it. But this bit here is getting pretty hot, to be honest. See the, I mean, it does have a heat symbol warning on it, but I think maybe the reason the other one had a big gap in it was to act as a heat shield, which would have made a lot of sense. Obviously that is extremely hot, just hovering my hand around there. So. As you should always do when cooking, start with the non-spicy food first. So we're going for the uh, lime chili chicken mini fillets. And, uh, oh, I'm going to, oh, no. I was gonna say I'm gonna wash that up, but I have another one that's already ready. I'm washing this up between putting the chicken on and taking it off, because obviously it's gonna be raw chicken, then it's gonna be cooked chicken. So. Oh, how much do you reckon? This is not gonna, <laughs> I am not gonna. Oh, well, it worked for once. I actually managed to still open a wrapper. Now there's cooking instructions on these, but I'm essentially putting them on the equivalent to a barbecue. So I'm not really expecting to 
to have a cooking time. I'm going to go for about six minutes. And that should be enough to do these completely. I'm not going to overlap any of them. They've already got some oil on them. And there we go. I'll start. Uh, Alexa, timer. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, we'll return in five minutes and see what happens. I'm going to go put the rolls in the oven in the meantime. Thought I'd show you uh, midstream what's going on. So you can see there's a lot of water escaping from the top. I'm going to uh, just rinse off this. Should we have a look, see if any bits of chicken need moving around at all? Ooh, look at that. We are uh, getting somewhere. Wow, they're uh, not quite done going by the field, but they're really close and that's only been a couple of minutes. Don't know if you can see that, but that end one is definitely still undercooked. So I'm just, I'm just flipping them over and moving them around. So uh, let's try and put the bigger ones together on that side. couple more minutes and that'll be ready. Wow. That was only about two or three minutes. It was really quick. Okay, only a few minutes later, the alarm hasn't even gone off. I've got the old temperature probe. Um, I think what we need to do is go in and find out if this is ready. So, we need to, we need to temperature probe some of these bits of chicken. Let's start with the uh, largest one here. Uh, 76 so anything over 75 and we're pretty much done let's go for the small one which wasn't very well cooked a minute ago 77 79 so this is all cooked and i'm going to probe each of them 76 into the middle of that one 73 74 they're still going up so they're still cooking as we're there so yeah i think we're good They seem to brown more on the top than they do on the bottom. So I might just flip them once more. Alexa, timer off. So yeah, that, the five minutes, six minutes was just about bang on. So just as I get the bread ready, I'm just gonna leave them for a couple of seconds there. I don't wanna overcook them. But, probing them meant perfect temperature. So, it's time to get them in the rolls. Um, The rolls aren't quite ready, so I'll have to take them off and put them on a plate. Get that ready to put in the rolls in a second. Right, Let's put them all on this plate here. That worked out really well. Now, as you've noticed, but none of the juices appear to roll off they're all stuck on there um, i don't know what the cause of that is i don't know if you can see that so we've got now the cajun chicken I think this is only two chicken breasts looking at it. Medium and spicy. I'm going to have to wash my hands so I've just touched that. Oh, it's a lot of complicate, complicated flavours going to come out of these. Alexa, five minute timer. Five minutes, 39. And here are the Cajun chicken breasts. They're in there and we'll return to those when they're done. Just discovered this. Um, this is gonna sound crazy, but there's a stand at the back you're supposed to flip up to make it lean forward. So as the um, juices drain out, I hadn't really noticed that. So 
it was putting everything flat. So I've now done that and now we have juice just flowing down the front. Oops. <laughs> Bit of a setup fail there, but rectified. Um, oh, these ones are so spicy I'm beginning to get gassed by them. Alexa, alarm off. Okay, let's just probe these ones and check they're cooked. Yep, 86. Go for the big, oh, now I've gone all the way through. In the middle, 80. 80, so we're good. That's ready, no need to put the lid down on that. Put that to be washed up. And put that on the plate with the uh, rest of the chicken. Max has already collected his. And there we have it, all the chicken cooked. Fantastic. Now, let's turn that off. Uh, I think leave it open because I don't know if you close it, it really burns on sometimes. So, moving on. But now you can see there's a much greater slope. I found these uh, feet at the back. I was wondering why was the, why was nothing draining off of it. Now I know my stupidity. All right, moving on. Let's go make some sandwiches. So here we are, ready to make sandwiches. So we got some of these little crusty rolls, and we got two nice big chicken breasts. Which one do you want? You want both? Two different, two different rolls, yeah? Just half of the... Oh, so you want me to cut it in half that way? Yeah, that's half of the cheese half of the Let's get you a plate. I'm fighting with the plate. There we are. Two, I take it. Mm -hmm. There we go. And the whole thing, you want me to cut it in half, yeah? That way? So then you get that. There we go. The other bit as well. <laughs> there we go. Wow, two massive chicken sandwiches. Look how amazing those look. I'm gonna do the same as well. Oh. For mine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Although I will be putting some spicy red sauce on mine. Oh. I think I'm going to cut it the same. Top down that part. And then pop both in the bread. There we are. Wow, look at that. Lots of chicken. Right, I'll hand mine off to my assistants. We have two bread rolls left over for later and a plate full of chicken juices. Yummy. That's going straight in the sink because we don't know what state those chicken juices are at. And I got a George Foreman to clean up, which is looking pretty filthy. Uh, let's try the spicy Cajun chicken one first, shall we? Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. That's really yummy. Just chicken and bread. Mmm. I love the George Foreman grill. Mm -mm -mm. Right, I'm off to eat the rest of this. If you enjoyed today's video, please think of subscribing and thanks for watching. Um, bye bye for now.
subscribe.